Cover crops provide numerous soil health advantages, including erosion prevention, improved soil structure, and increased organic matter. But does one size fit all? In this week's episode, we dig deeper with Dr. Abby Wick. I'm so excited for this episode. Yeah, it's gonna be a good one. There's a lot of research out there about soil health and a ton of technical information, but none of it does us any good unless we can see how it actually takes place at the ground level. My name is Tim Hamrich from the Future of Agriculture podcast. Cool Planet and I are gonna travel the country and capture stories about how land stewards and growers and farmers are actually developing their own soil health and how that impacts their lives and the food they're growing for you. This week's episode takes us to Fargo, North Dakota, where I met up with Dr. Abby Wick, renowned soil health expert with the North Dakota State University Extension. Tell us more about your role as a soil scientist. What is your role in working with farmers? My job really is to listen to what the farmers are saying and the the requests that they have for what we need to be doing on campus. And then to take that to the researchers that we have who are doing excellent work and get have them do some of those research projects to take back to the farmer. Bringing researchers, bringing industry, bringing people like the NRCS or soil conservation districts, bringing the farmers, bringing extension, bringing all of them to the table to figure out what we can do to solve a, a given issue. How do farmers, in your perspective, how would you kind of sum up how farmers are looking at soil health? A majority of the farmers that I work with are looking at it from a, a I'm going to farm the land in a sustainable way so that I can pass it on to my kids. Mm. So most of the farmers that I, t that I work with will say they're not farming for themselves, they're farming for the next generation. Mm. So a lot of them are concerned about erosion. We have high wind erosion in the winter, especially with, with no snowpack some years. Um, and, I, and I don't know a single farmer that likes seeing his soils blow away. Um, that's really tough when that's your biggest investment on the farm. As they're approaching these problems like, like erosion and trying to build the nutrient and water holding capacity, what are the barriers to, I guess, improving that? Or what, is that, what does that even look like? If, if I know my soil could be better and I want to improve it, you know, what's step one? For me, when I work with them, is, is figuring out how to get your rotation right and where can you fit in things like cover crops into that rotation. We don't even talk about reduced tillage or strip till or any of that kind of stuff until we figure out the cheaper part of it, which is using cover crops or, or rotation. Well, let's go uh, get in some soil. Okay. <laughs> All right. Where are we right now? Tell us about this field that we're standing in. This does not look like your typical North Dakota crop. It doesn't. And so this was a wheat field and it was, it was harvested maybe two, three weeks ago. And then a cover crop was planted out here. So this farmer uses a concept called bio strip till. And I think it's really cool because it's not just blanketing the field with cover crops, which is what it may look like. It's specifically seeding cover crops in rows for in preparation for corn the next year. And so when you look at here, you can see that, that they're faba beans on 30 inch row spacing. You see a little bit lighter green. And then if you skip over 15 inches on 30 inch row spacing, you have radish, turnip, and flax. And so the goal on this is this faba is gonna to get to be a really nice dark residue and it's gonna be fairly upright. And it'll actually look like, like strip till next spring. It'll look like the soil was disturbed, but it'll be these black strips that'll warm up faster in the spring and then he'll plant his corn right on those strips. And so first of all, these are amazing soils, right? Yeah. <laughs> are you seeing this? <laughs> <laughs> this is a, a high clay soil with unbelievable aggregation in it. And, and why have multiple cover crops? I mean, why not just plant this whole thing in radishes? So the nice thing about that is that if the radish doesn't take off, the faba beans might. And if the faba beans don't take off, the, the flax mm. might. And all of these different cover crops have a different purpose in their soil and different root structures. And this tap root will get down to, I mean, we've seen it at four feet after 12 weeks. And so for us, that's great. It's capturing all those nutrients from that have leached and bringing them back to the surface and storing them in this organic material. This one being a legume is fixing nitrogen. We have the, the volunteer wheat coming back in, which is a really nice fibrous root. Mm -hmm. And so that's gonna build soil aggregation. And the flax is, is known to be really mycorrhizal friendly. Mm -hmm. I guess flax is just a little bit more prone. They to love that. the flax. Abby then took me out to one of her research plots where they're analyzing the correlation between nitrogen rates and cover crops. We did different nitrogen rates to see when, how much nitrogen needs to be added and when it's released from the cover crops and to answer some of those questions that farmers have about when am I going to get this, this nitrogen that this cover crop took up hmm. back for my crop. And, and what's your hypothesis? What do you think we're going to see here? Uh, you know, we're, we're seeing what we don't expect. And you know, the, the, the great thing about doing the science and the research is that 
that you learn that cover crops aren't all rainbows and puppies. You know, it's, it's not something that, that you're going to get that nitrogen back that following year and you can credit a certain amount for, for having cover crops in your system. We're learning that, that we really need to understand how these approaches are going to work so that farmers don't get stung with, with not enough nitrogen in their fields. Um, when raising a corn crop. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're not sure when that nitrogen gets released. It, it varies in, in different years. What's your favorite thing to share with a farmer about soil health? My favorite thing is when we go out in a field and a farmer and I dig in their soil and they see what's happening. That's my favorite thing to share with them is that moment where they're seeing what their soils can do and how quickly they can change. It's a, a moment in time where they're, where they're seeing how something that they're doing is, is changing mm -hmm. their soils.